Are you frustrated by failed flow runs? Not sure what's causing your flow to fail? In this tutorial, I'll cover five common flow errors and how to fix them. In this first flow example, I've defined a filter query in the get items action. The reason this flow failed is because the internal column name is required. Keep in mind, this column name may not always match what you see in SharePoint. To get the internal column name of your column, click on the gear icon and select List Settings. Locate your column and click on it. In your browser's address bar, go to the end of the URL. The internal column name will appear after the word field and an equal sign. Copy this text to your clipboard. Replace the column name with the correct internal column name. Run a test. In this flow example, I'm using a filter array action to filter out employees from my SharePoint list who have a birth date in three days. The flow will send a reminder email to the employee's manager. The reason this flow failed is because I'm using the format date time function on the birth date value in the filter array action. There are items in my SharePoint list that don't contain a birth date. To prevent this flow from failing, I need to first define a filter query in the get items action. This filter query will filter out any list items without a date in the birth date column. It's always best practice to define a filter query when using the get items action. Run a test. In this flow example, I'm looping through items from an Excel table and outputting the task due date of each item. This flow failed because the format date time function requires a string in ISO 8601 format. Let's take a look at the outputs from the list rows present in a table action. The task due dates are outputting in a serial date format. To prevent this flow from failing, click on Show Advanced Options in the list rows present in a table action and select ISO 8601 as the date time format. Let's run another test. If we take a look at the outputs from this action again, the task due dates are now outputting in the correct format. In this flow example, I'm using a condition action to check whether the number from this Microsoft form is greater than one. Although this question in the Microsoft form is restricted to a number, the restriction simply checks if the value entered is a number. The reason this flow failed is because the output of the question response is actually a string. When using an operator that checks if one value is greater than, less than, or equals to another value, it expects two values of matching types. In this case, it expects two values to be integers. An easy way to tell if a number is an integer is by looking at the outputs. If your number output is blue and appears between double quote marks, it's a string. If it's green, it's an integer. You can also output the value in a compose action. If it's a string, it'll be black, and if it's an integer, it'll be green. Pro tip, add a terminate action to your flow to prevent subsequent actions from running while you're testing. It's a quick way to focus on one part of your flow without setting off the rest. Keep in mind, you can't nest a terminate action inside and apply to each action. To output this value as an integer, use an expression. Insert the int function. The int function takes a single parameter, a string. It'll convert the string into a number. Run a test. The int function has converted the string into an integer. I can insert the output from this compose action here, or I can insert the expression directly into this field. The same issue applies when working with data from SharePoint or Excel. It's always best practice to use a number column if you need to perform tasks that require your numbers to be integers. 
Remember to verify the output of your number and adjust as necessary. If you try to use an int function on a value that contains a decimal, your flow will fail. In this flow example, I'm pulling data from an Excel table. The currency column contains decimal values. To prevent errors, I've defined a filter query to exclude any rows where the currency column is empty. The filter query field in the list rows present in a table action can only accept a single condition, and the column header cannot contain spaces. If you need to filter your data using multiple conditions, you'll need to use a filter array action. I've linked a tutorial in the description box below. Use and apply to each action to loop through each item. Add a compose action to output the currency value. Run a test. The value is black, which means Power Automate is treating it as a string. Add another compose action and convert the value to a number. If I use the int function, the flow fails. The error message states that the int function was invoked with a parameter that is not valid. This happens because the int function only works with whole numbers. Since my currency column contains decimal values, the function fails. Instead, I need to use the float function, which supports decimals. Click on the expression to edit it and replace the int function with a float function. Run a test. The flow has converted the value to a number. A common issue you'll notice is that trailing zeros are dropped. To fix this, you'll need to edit the expression and insert an additional function. Click on the expression to edit it. Place your cursor at the start of the expression. We're going to wrap this expression in the format number function. The format number function takes three parameters. The first parameter is the value. The second is the format. The third is locale. The locale parameter defines how the number is formatted based on Power Automate's regional settings. This parameter is optional. If omitted, the system's default locale is used. Place your cursor at the end of the expression by pressing the down arrow key and enter a comma and single quotes. Next, enter the format of how you'd like your number to be displayed. To display two decimal places, I'll enter this. Press the down arrow key again to go to the end of the expression and add a closing parenthesis. Press update to save your changes. Run a test. The trailing zero is now included. Keep in mind that the format number function converts the number back to a string. If you need to perform calculations or comparisons, you must first convert the value to a number. Once you've done that, use the format number function to format the final output. Let me show you. I've added a compose action to output the percentage dynamic content. Just like the currency value, Power Automate outputs this as a string. For demo purposes, I'm going to use an expression to calculate the percent of the currency. Insert the mull function. The mull function takes two parameters and multiplies them. For the first parameter, I'll insert the output from the currency number compose action. Remember that this compose action has an expression that uses the float and format number function. Add a comma, then insert the second parameter. In my case, I'll insert the output from the percentage compose action above. When I run a test, the flow fails. This is because the mull function requires both parameters to be an integer or a decimal number. Since the format number function converts the currency number back into a string, remove this function for now. Press update to save your changes. Because the percentage dynamic content outputs as a string, we'll need to use the float function. When I insert the float function, the only dynamic content available for me to select from is body and value. I'll need to insert an expression for the percentage dynamic content. To do this, I'll first insert the dynamic content back into the compose action. Click on the three dots and select peak code. Highlight the text after the at symbol and before the second set of double quote marks. Copy this text to your clipboard. Remove the dynamic content. 
Insert the float function and paste the content from your clipboard. Run a test. For more tips and tricks on working with expressions, check out this tutorial. Now we need to format the number. The functions in an expression are performed from the inside out. Click on the expression to edit it. Wrap this entire expression in the format number function as we did previously. Pay close attention to the tooltip when writing functions. The tooltip will bold the parameter required. Once I add a comma, it bolds the second parameter which indicates I need to enter the format. Press update to save your changes. Run a test. Since the format number function is the outermost function, it runs last and the number has been converted back into a string. What other errors have you run into? Let me know down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. For more Power Automate troubleshooting tips, check out this tutorial. I'll cover five frequently asked questions that pop up when troubleshooting a flow. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. Thanks for watching.